What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba and Marina. Got a quick video discussion for you. I want to apologize first and foremost if this is longer than what it should be, uh, but I read a recent uh, scuba board article and I posted on it and I thought this would be a good time to make a video on this because this is something I see a lot of times on scuba board or I get a lot of questions out in the, in the industry or I get questions from uh, you know customers or whatnot. The article that was on scuba board, a gentleman had directed his question uh, straight to dive instructors on their opinions on whether it was better to be a shop instructor or an independent instructor. Um, and there's a lot of pros and cons to each side of that, but I, I went on there and I posted and replied to him. And I want to put my reply out here in the video and maybe this will help you make that decision in the future. Give you some quick background on myself. I do own a dive shop. I am a shop instructor. I'm also an independent instructor and I have been both for a very, very long time. Um, and I teach through multiple agencies. Some uh, do require you to be shop affiliates, some do not. So that's how I'm able to be a shop instructor and a uh, independent at the same time. Uh, depending on where you work or who you teach for, they, they may have restrictions to where you can't do that. Um, and, and that's understandable. You know. Uh, when we talk about the scuba industry, it is a business first and foremost. If anybody tells you it's not, they're lying. If they tell you they did not, they got into the scuba industry not to make money, they're lying because this is a business. That's why we're here. Not just our shop. Gear manufacturers are a business. They're here to make money. Travel agents, they're a business. They're here to make money. The whole scuba industry itself is a business and it's here to make money. So don't let anybody tell you that, well, I just got into it for this or that reason, whatever. They're here to make money. If you're a dive professional, you paid a ton of money. You took all the classes. And if you're not a dive professional, let me tell you, it cost a fortune to become a dive professional. And sometimes it takes a, a lifetime to earn your money back. With that being said, before we get started on the pros and cons to being a shop instructor versus an independent instructor, I need to tell you this. As a dive professional, you need to set a goal and you need to strive to reach that goal. And based off what your goal is, that will help you make a decision on should you be a shop instructor or an independent instructor. So I'll give you a quick example and then we'll get into it. If your goal is to teach students, Shop instructors are a great way to go because you're going to have a lot higher student count. You're going to have a better opportunity to teach. If your goal is to have a, a, a small nick in the, in the industry, such as, say, the tech diving field, or maybe you want to teach public safety, maybe you want to teach uh, ice diving, or whatever it may be, that small little nick, then an independent is a great way to go. Um, if you don't care anything about teaching newer students, then don't become a shop instructor being independent. If you want to teach a ton of students, not worry about overhead or anything like that, then a shop instructor is a good way to go, not an independent. So there's pros and cons to each, but based off what your goal is, that's going to help you determine which way to be. So let's take a quick look at some of the pros and cons of each, and maybe this will help you decide which way to go. When we talk about shop instructors, there's many different types of shop instructors out there. Some are they strictly teach for that shop. Some, they teach for the shop and they work in the store. They're store employees, whatever it may be. Um, <clears throat> some, you know, what, whatever their jobs are, they, they teach and whatnot. Um, with that being said, with all the different training agencies out there, some require you to be affiliated with a shop. So let's say, and I'll give you a prime example, SSI, we are an SSI facility, and SSI, yes, they require their instructors to be affiliated with that shop. So, you know, that's some of the things that you got to think about when you become a shop instructor. Some of the other agencies that we train through here, they do not require you to be shop instructors. You can teach independently. Um, and of course, some of those other agencies that we teach for, of course, being PADI, PDIC, SEIC, MASS, you know, whatever we teach, um, some require, some do not. With that being said, if you make the decision to be a shop instructor, some of the pros, especially for ours, some of the pros are we cover your insurance. You know, we have a blanket policy that we cover all our shop instructors on. Uh, if you're an SSI instructor for us, we're going to cover your insurance. Another pro, of course, is we're going to give you some of the best discounts out there. No, we are not going to sell you gear at our cost because, like I said, we are here to make money. We're a company. We're a business like anything else, and our goal is to make money. Now, with that being said, you ain't going to find gear no cheaper through us or no cheaper through anywhere else but us. We will beat Leisure Pro's price. Uh, most dive instructors can't just call up a gear manufacturer and get gear 
cheaper than say Leisure Pro, and I keep going back to that because Leisure Pro is one of the cheapest places out there, but you know, we're gonna get you gear cheaper. Um, so we cover your insurance. We, we help you out on gear there. Uh, we're also going to cover you on trips. If you're leading a trip for us, they don't cost you a dime. Of course, most of the time you ain't going to pay for your diving. We're going to cover your lodging, your gas and food. We cover that for you. Okay, if you're one of our shop instructors, that's some of the pros there. Another pro is you don't have to worry about overhead. When your students come in and we require them to have gear, you don't have to supply that rental gear for them. All right, we do it through the shop. So you don't have the overhead there. So there's quite a few pros to being a shop instructor. Let's look at some of the cons or some of the misconception on what a con is to being a shop instructor. Um, one of the cons is usually there's a uniform policy. And I'm not just talking about, you know, wearing a uniform when you're working, such as polos or nice pants and stuff like that. I'm not actually talking about wearing a uniform when you teach. And a lot of times shops will do that. They'll put a uniform policy on you where you have to wear the gear they tell you to wear um, when, when you're teaching. Now, when you become an employee of that shop, you need to discuss that with your employer. Is this something they're going to provide for you? Is it something they require you to purchase and have on your own? But depending on the agency, the philosophies, the business models that they use, this is a legitimate concern that a lot of people have is, I don't necessarily like the gear they are making me wear. And let me tell you a little story uh, about myself that a lot of you may not know uh, about a uniform policy. Um, I've been a public servant since 2004. I've worked for all three services, the fire service. I'm, I'm a, currently a firefighter and EMT. Uh, I've worked for EMS, uh, worked for a local community, uh, local county near us. I was a medic for them. And then of course, um, I was a police officer and a deputy sheriff. And during my, my tenure as a, uh, law enforcement officer, I served both as a police officer and a deputy sheriff. I was kind of dual sworn for different departments there. And we had a uniform policy. It was a given. We had to wear uniforms. And my goal at being a law enforcement officer was not necessarily to get out there and wear what I thought was the best uniform or carry what I thought was the best firearm as a sidearm. My goal was to get out there and serve my community, to protect and serve the citizens and the property of the area that I lived or the area that I served. That was my goal. So when that department told me, you can only wear this uniform or, you know, I, like I said, I was dual sworn. I worked for two different departments. I had two different guns. One gun I really liked, one gun maybe I didn't like so much. But, you know, the, the department that I carried the gun that I didn't necessarily like when they told me, well, we understand that you're sworn with this agency over here too, and we're not going to allow you to, to pull your gun from this agency and wear it at this agency, you have to wear it. You know, I didn't really say, well, that's a con. Well, it, it's not even so much as a nuisance because my goal wasn't to get out there and carry the gun I want. Look, I carry all the time now for self-defense, and I get to carry the gun I want, but my goal as an officer was to serve my community. I could care less what gun I carry. I could care less the color of my uniform, whether I had a deputy star or a police badge. And none of that mattered to me. My goal was to serve my community. So I was perfectly happy being a sworn law enforcement officer. It didn't matter which one. It didn't matter the uniform color I wore. Um, but that was my goal. So I, I didn't let the nuisance of that uniform policy get to me because it had nothing to do with my goal of being a law enforcement officer. Bring it back to the scuba industry. If you're a shop instructor and you're being successful and you're getting your student counts, whatever you feel like you should get, and you're happy doing what you're doing, why in the world would it ever bother you that your shop owner or your boss says, you have to wear this BC, you, you have to wear this, this regulator? And, and let me tell you something. Um, they're not telling you, I would never tell my employees, this is the only equipment you can ever wear. All we tell them is, is when you're in front of a student, this is your uniform and this is what you must wear. You know, my guys, they dive all the time outside of the shop. They they wear gear manufacturers that we don't sell. And, you know, it's not that we don't agree with those gear manufacturers. It's just it's not part of our business model. So when you have that requirement or that that uniform policy that which you must abide by, it's not really a, a nuisance if your goal is to get out there and to train people how to dive. It shouldn't really matter what that uniform policy is. It shouldn't even be a nuisance to you. You are you are getting to breathe underwater. You're getting to have a good time. You're getting to share your experience and get out there with people and teach them how to dive. Does it really matter what gear you wear? And if you're confident in your scuba abilities, 
it doesn't matter what gear you wear. There may be a fin that you really just simply don't like, but if you're confident and you can make it work, what does the uniform policy matter to you? Because that is not your goal. You're not, your goal is not to get out there as a dive professional. It may be as a diver, but not as a dive professional. Your goal is to get out there and to teach people how to scuba dive. So, taking the main con out of being a, a, a shop instructor, meaning you have to wear what you're told to wear, that uniform policy, if you look at it from that standpoint, it's not really a con, it's not a nuisance, it's not that big a deal. You take any successful business out there, Let's take McDonald's. McDonald's is a very successful business. They are probably the largest chain of fast food restaurant out there. And every McDonald's you go in, anywhere in the world, they have a uniform policy. Ours here, or the ones that here in our area, they all wear black pants. They all wear button-up burgundy shirts or yellow shirts or black shirts or white shirts. Some wear ties and bow ties. It's a uniform policy. No, it may not be glamorous getting out there selling hamburgers and, and french fries and, and Coke and Pepsi or whatever they're serving, but they're being successful at what they do and they're happy making money and, and they're happy doing their job so the uniform does not bother them. If it bothered them, they wouldn't be doing their job. So why are you going to let your uniform policy at the shop you teach at or why, why would that even be a concern for you if you're happy being successful what you're doing? So... Now let's switch over to the independent instructor look at some of the pros and cons there as well. Some of the pros to be an independent instructor, you really get to pick what students you get to teach. <clears throat> you can t teach as much as you want or as less as you want. You can wear the gear that you want to wear. Um, so there's a lot. Usually you don't have the overhead. You can put the requirement on your student. Hey, when you come to me for this class, you will have this gear, this gear, this gear, this gear. Go buy it wherever you want to buy. You don't have to supply that for that for that student. You can make them do it. That's an independent. Um, you may not have to have the same teaching facility that, say, the shops have to have as far as a large classroom. You know, you can do it in your living room or, or your kitchen or something like that. Um, if you have your own pool... That, that's great too. You may not have to go out and rent pools like some shops do. Some shops own pools, some shop rent pools. So that that's a, a good pro or some of the good pros to be an independent instructor. You can teach who you want, you can wear what you want, you can set your own hours, you can do all this. Now, some of the cons to be an independent instructor, you may have to pay your insurance. More than likely, you're going to pay your insurance. You're going to pay the full premium on it. Um, let's say that your students, you may not get the student count that you want as an independent instructor simply because you don't have the overhead that the shops do. If you have to supply gear, you're still going to have to fork that money out there. Let me give you a little hint of how the industry works. The manufacturers may not give you that best of a deal as an independent instructor as what they do the shops as far as getting gear in on key man prices, all that stuff. So you may not have those benefits that a shop instructor may have. You may have to have that overhead that a shop instructor is not going to you know, have to be required. Uh, when you do trips, you may have to charge more uh, per person to pay to pay your way of getting on those trips or whatnot that a shop instructor, the, the shops cover. So there's pros and cons to each side. It all boils down to what is your goal? Is your goal to get out there and to get a bunch of free diving? Boy, you're going to pay out the butt to be an instructor to do that. Is your goal to teach as many students as possible? Well, you may have to be a shop instructor to do that, but you may have that uniform policy that you simply just do not like. So there's pros and cons to each. Is your goal just to teach scuba? You don't care who you teach. You don't care how many you teach. Then, you know, an independent's a good way to go. You just want to teach scuba. You know, maybe you do it for fun, for the enjoyment. Maybe you want to be successful and do it to make money. So the shop instructor's a way to go. So no matter what you decide, be a shop instructor, be an independent, you first and foremost need to set a goal and then base your decision off of that goal. Yes, there are going to be some sacrifices that you have to make one way or the other, um, and that's just part of being in business, being successful, or doing anything you want to do. Sometimes you have to sacrifice one way or the other. Just don't let those sacrifices completely control your decision because... You know, the, the truth of it is you're not going to be able to do everything that you want to do without some of those sacrifices. So, guys, I, I hope that this opens your eyes to, to both ways, shop instructor, independent instructor. I hope you see that it's more important to set a goal than it is to get out there and do this or the other. 
So guys, I really hope this video opened your eyes. I hope you learned something from it. If you've got a comment, a concern, please put it down in the description. If you agree with me, put it down in the description. Hit the like button. If you disagree, hit that dislike button or put it down. Uh, tell me your, your honest opinion in the description down below. Hit that uh, link in the description. Go to the scuba board. Put your two cents in there. Help this gentleman out that has a question. If you've got a different philosophy than I do, go out there and put it out there. Um, you know, trust me. I'm an ex-cop. I've heard everything out there. I've been called names. If you don't like the things I say, put it down in the description. Let me know. But guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. I do hope you learned something from it. I hope it opened your eyes. I hope you learned that it's more important to set a goal than to make a decision first. Once your goal is set, then make your decision based off that goal. Um, once again, if you got a comment, concern, complaint, put it down below. Hit the like, hit the dislike. If you're not one of our subscribers, reach up and hit that subscribe button. If you want to see more videos like, like this, let us know. This is what we're going to put out there for you. But as always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you like us on Facebook. You pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.